Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. And uh, yes, he is back, Millennial Mike. Someone who is doing probably more for this channel than just about anyone, including myself. He's going back, reading your comments, getting out the spicy ones, getting out, uh, you know, some ones that are nice too, once in a while. But he likes he likes the spicy ones. So uh, <laughs> this is quickly becoming a favorite of folks, and uh, it is a lot of fun for me. So how are you doing this morning? I'm good. I'm excited. We have a, a few good videos planned for today. We're going to react to Graham Stefan. We're going to take a look at your predictions. But yeah, we're starting off with the Q&A section. Um, and I do try to prioritize uh, controversial comments, but a little bit lately, it's been a little harder to find some people <laughs> with as much bass in their voice, seeing as they're getting proven wrong left and right. That being said, we do have a lot of great questions from the comment section today. So uh, we're going to start with uh, an individual who says you were right about the economy and right about the housing market. So Vital Signs asks, or he says, Michael, you freaking nailed it. I'm confused though. You say you're excited, yet also say destruction and opportunity are coming, but also that there will be a freeze. Transactions are crashing. Opportunities will be few and far between if no forced sellers evolve. So can you further explain to us what you mean by all of that? Yeah, basically the answer is um, buying out of the MLS, just you know, like we did for the last couple of years, you know, paying list price, bidding over. Th that market's dead and gone. Uh, I believe what is happening the next six months, really through March, is going to be the winter of discontent, the frozen tundra, whatever it is. But that doesn't mean housing stops. Even in 1981, when rates hit almost 20 percent, we still did two million transactions. Right. We're a bigger country now, more stuff. Right. So we're, we should still probably do three, eight, three, nine, you know, three point eight, three point nine million transactions. I just think those transactions will be could be different. I think seller financing uh, will become very common. One of the things I am playing with, I haven't put it out there yet, but I'm, I'm thinking about sicking a, a Fresno agent on the following is and I just I'm just going to share it because I always share what I'm doing. So Fresno's media home price is roughly four fifty. Let's call it 500. There are some very nice homes in Fresno above 800 grand. Not a market I play in at all, right? It doesn't cash flow, this or that. I am thinking about just proving how powerful seller financing is. This is what I'm thinking about doing. And I'm going to use PropStream to do this. Go to PropStream, look at a couple of zip codes like 93730, 93711, uh, you know, a couple of very high end zip codes. And go, hey, show me all the listings on the MLS. PropStream has it checked. Show me all the listings um, above 500K. Show me all the listings with owners' um, equity above 60%. And then what I'm going to do is, because I just don't have the time to do this anymore, thank goodness. I probably, I probably will sick an agent on it to go call the listing agents and say, hey, your, your property's been listed a while. What if I had a buyer? That will give you the seller their price, but wants terms, right? We talked about this yesterday in the seller financing deep dive with uh, Bob Langworth. I can play with the terms, right? For me, the number is cash flow, right? I can still pay eight hundred grand. I can still give the seller some cash at closing, but I can structure the note where I only pay, you know, X, and my cash and my rent is Y, and I just collect the difference, and I just put everything off as a balloon. So. I think I'm going to try one of those things just to prove how powerful seller financing is because people think you can't do these things. And I'm like, it's just math. You have to find a seller with equity, no doubt. You have to find a seller with equity and wants out. And then if you can find a seller that wants their price, but will take terms, uh, you know, it's not going to be easy. They're not just laying around, but I, I, I think I'm going to do this just because to, to prove people what's possible. So that's what I think. I think, I think we're going to see, People who are hungry, people who try, people who work, people who write 20, 30, 40, 50 offers, they're going to get deals done. It's not going to be the whole you know, standard 20% down, go get a bank loan. I, I think transactions will be different. Yeah. Yeah. So to that commenter's point, yeah, things are slowing down. Things are freezing up, but there is opportunity if you're willing to be better than average, do more work than other people will and learn about seller financing. If you haven't already, you need to watch the deep dive 
and you need to watch any other video on seller financing that he's put out. Okay, next question. So this one, this one sort of, uh, I just, we just want your reaction to it because recently you and I reacted to a Milton Friedman video. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, it was a good one. And Ernest Petrilli says, the Mount Rushmore of economists, Adam Smith, John Maynard Keyes, Milton Friedman, and Michael Zuber. <laughs> right, right? Yeah, that's, and your response was, that might be the greatest compliment I've ever gotten. <laughs> yeah, um, first and foremost, thank you very much. Uh, I... I'm not even I, I'm not even in the top ten thousand or hundred thousand or whatever, but uh, I do try. I do try to be better. Uh, I am I am a little bit unique, and that my focus was always the consumer. I then been looking at the real estate market for twenty two years in depth. So when it comes to real estate, I'm probably better than most. Uh, but yeah, the 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 economic field is wide and diverse, and I, I am a I I'm an unbalanced economist. But I appreciate the comment. I, and again, that's. That is just, I, I thank you. That is so nice to hear. And for those of you who didn't recognize the other three names, you should probably pick up a book. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Google is your friend. <laughs> okay, so um, there's been a lot of advice out there, you know, about waiting, trying to time the market. And the sole purpose of that is so you can hopefully find a house that's affordable. Well, recently somebody put in one of your comments another method they thought. That would allow them to buy a cheap house. So Bob McGrath said, he goes, if construction materials do come down to pre-pandemic levels, just build your own house for pre-pandemic prices. Dimensional lumber is already there. Labor is not. It's still up 30%. And your response was nice. So my question for you, Mike, on this is, if a recession happens, if the economy goes into a deep recession and prices come down, do you think that individuals will actually be able to get pre-pandemic pricing on new builds? So actually from a builder? Or right, from a builder. From is someone uh, from a no. builder gonna build? No, I don't think so. I didn't uh, think so either, but I want to know why. Yeah. So again, I think build well, I think what's gonna happen with builders is they're already slowing down. It's a supply, it's a supply demand thing, right? So they were going hundred miles an hour, now they're going twenty. They're gonna go from uh build build uh uh spec building to you know custom builds and all of that. They're just gonna be doing other things. They're um they, you know, if we got back to 2019 or pre-pandemic pricing, they, their profit margins wouldn't be as great. And, you know, they're, I, I, you know, call it calling a company greedy is, is, is a dangerous word. It's a trigger word, but their, their job is to produce as much profit for the shareholders possible. So, uh, a for-profit company won't, won't do that. In my opinion, I don't think, uh, they're going to, they're going to raise margins. Um, they're going to do other things. They're going to sell entire communities, build for rent. Uh, I do not see a for-profit organization going, you know, I can almost see the commercial, right? Lennar, 2019 prices in 2023. I don't see it. I just don't see it. Yeah, sometimes I worry that the oversimplified common sense things that we tell ourselves, you know, you really have to dig a little deeper because if you plan on that, if you make that your plan, hey, I'm just waiting for the economy to crash. Houses are going to come down 25%. Well, except that interest rates are going to triple and you're going to end up paying more. I'm just going to wait for, you know, prices of materials to come down. And then, of course, the builders are going to sell at one third of what they're selling now, you know, or they'll go out of business and you yeah. won't be able to buy anything. So. Yeah, yeah. The one th but one thing in this comment, it might, I mean, it's interesting to poke at if you if you flip the script because um, one of my experts, I think it was Thatch, Thatch Nguyen said, what he likes to do today is buy two bedroom, one bath and convert to three twos, mm -hmm. right? Being a, you know, your own contractor and kind of piecemealing the work. If you have the skill and experience that mm -hmm. could prove interesting, right? A, cause again, I think labor is going to come in. I think people are going to get laid off. People are going to be hungry. I think so. Again, if you are in the value creation and you want to tackle bigger projects that might come in next year, it's probably not today. Cause again, labor is still up. But by next summer, I mean, again, I think I'm going to build my ADU because of that, right? I think I think this lag in, in the Fresno of City probably saved me 50 grand because, you know, commodity prices are coming in. So I don't know. I think, I, you know, I think there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of ways to make money in this game. And you're right. I think oversimplifying it and trying to tie things together that you hope works. Not always, but yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I think doing what Thatch did, buying two ones, making three twos could work if you have that experience. I'm in the middle of doing exactly that with one of my properties ah, right there now. there you go. See?
Okay, uh, uh, let's see here. Treasury bonds. In one of your recent daily financial news, you talked about treasury bonds. I think you asked the question, like, what would they have to get to for you to consider buying them? I did. Um, Corinne Mars asks, she goes, I heard another YouTube channel recommending the six-month U.S. Treasury. Why did you, Michael Zuber, refer to the one- or two-year U.S. Treasuries? Was it only because of Jim Cramer? I believe it was Reventure Consulting who mentioned huh. the six-month on September 15th of 2022. Oh, Your response, him. right? Your response was Jim Cramer bought, and I'm like, wow, just a crazy idea in my head. So, Mike, give us a little more info on Treasury bonds. Yeah, so one of the things, like if you follow my career, right, as a real estate investor, I never had any cash. So, I, I mean, every time I had cash, it was like uh, Grant Cardone says, you buy something else, right? You buy another asset, you buy another mm -hmm. asset. So I never had enough cash or capital to really think about, you know, should I put it over here or over here? Uh, well, the last, you know, year or so, uh, people have heard me talk about on my channel doing some cash out refis, locking in rates below four. And, you know, since, you know rates are gone up. I, I think somebody did the math for me the other day. The, the one year rate went up 1,700%. When the one year treasury is at 0.26, I don't give a, I don't freaking care. But it's at four. I'm like, damn, four? It's, it's interesting, right? So I've just never thought about it. I read an article about Jim Cramer, who I consider a stock bull of all bulls. He, when he bought two years, I think he bought two years, it got my attention. And I, and I just, it wouldn't come out of my head. And sometimes when I do my daily financial news, I have to say things so it gets out of my head and I can move on to something else. Uh, I have not looked at the six month. Uh, shout out Reventure Consulting for talking about it. I don't know what the rate is, whatnot, but I do think they're. I mean, they're, I mean, again, right? If you're getting like these hedge funds are talking about getting six percent on single families, that's their kind of bar. <clears throat> if you can get four with no risk, I mean, at, at some point you got to ask yourself why not, right? So that's where I was in my head. I'm like, I don't know. So, again, shout out Reventure for for talking about it. I had not seen it. I don't watch his stuff. Um, but yeah, if he talked about it, that's awesome. I think it's great. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Now, here's a great question that probably a lot of your viewers can relate to. So this is uh, struggling to get started. This one comes from Jennifer McGraw. She goes, my husband and I live in Fresno and we're awesome. wanting to buy our first home. We're having trouble saving up enough for the down payment. Would the hub be helpful to us? And what other advice would you have for the first time home buyer? Uh, well, I'm glad the message of the hub is coming together for folks at Fresno. The, the short answer is probably not today, but that's the, that's that, that kind of question is what I want to hear from. I want to hear what people need. So when I hear that question, I go, damn it, Zuber, you're not thinking big enough or different enough, right? Like how can you help somebody who wants a home, but they can't, there's not enough money at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. Right. So do we get some kind of financial planner? Do we get, uh, you know, a Dave Ramsey acolyte? Do we, I mean, I don't know what the option is, but I want to know where people need help. I want to create resources and teams of people there. Seriously, my goal for Monday mornings at 9 a.m. when I now do calls with everybody at the hub is how many people do we help? That's what I want the first question to be. And it's going to take some weeks as the team builds and we figure out what's what. But that's what I'm trying to do. It's not you know, how many houses were sold or, you know, it's no, it's how many people did we help? I think that's going to be an amazing legacy. And I, if I do this right, or we do this right, the hub will be my, my biggest legacy, not the book, not this channel, not the postcards, none of this other stuff. So uh, the short answer is not yet. Uh, I should think about that. Uh, you know, bigger question again, I, I don't know anything, but you know, do you have a budget? It's, it's, it's frightening to me how many people don't have a budget. Uh, I could tell you one thing that was game changing for Olivia and I was this needs versus want exercise, mm -hmm. which almost nobody does. But I would take out your credit cards and bank statements from the last three months. I would sit down in a quiet place with no distractions, and I would just have an honest reflection. Write an N next to things you need and write a W next to things that you wanted. At the end of the day, add them all up and figure out what your percentage is. Our percentage, again, just for memory, was probably 60-40 needs and wants. And we just started whacking wants. We sacrificed for a decade. It becomes a lot easier to save when you stop spending on wants. But yeah, that, I, that's a great question. I I need to think bigger and different. So for the first time home buyer, and even the person who wants to buy their first rental property, because sometimes people, I got a good friend who's living with mom and dad, owns two rental properties, his first one, and he's still living with mom and dad, saving money. I'm proud of him. 
At the end of the day, nobody can do the work for you. Nobody's going to show up. Nobody's going to work the overtime. Nobody's going to cut back but you. So there's all these different things you need to learn about how to get started investing or how to buy your first house. You know, the, the credit rating, you got to get up. You've got to get pre-approved. You got to find the agent, look at your buy box. But when it comes to actually saving the down payment, there's no whiz bang method to get around it. There's nothing you can do. The work has to be done so you can cut expenses or you can make more money or you can do both. I worked a copious amounts of overtime. I think I worked like 55 days in a row just over and over to save the down payment so that I could buy the first rental. At some point, you're going to just have to punch in, do it, and then punch out. It's on you. So I know it sucks, but that one's on you. Okay. Uh, from the email list. So a couple email questions that came in and these are a little longer scenario based questions, but they're good. So this one is from somebody who just bought your course. This is from Sean. He says, mm. I live in San Diego. Do you have any zip codes that you can recommend? I feel like I need to be able to drive to the zip code. And then he says, I lived in Illinois and have a zip code that I know really well, but it's really far away. Is that going to be an issue? My goal is to get my first rental in the next three to six months. Um, so the, the, a flavor of this question comes up a lot and, and I'm glad, I'm glad we're doing this one. My course, how to get started one rental at a time is, um, it's trying to teach you something. It is trying to teach you a skill. That skill is how do I learn average in my buy box? He's zip code maybe in this, in his question. It is not a course that guarantees success. It's not a course that guarantees, that tells you what zip code to buy and it. None of that. What I want you to do is learn the skill because once you have a skill, you can take it anywhere. For me, it's a golf swing, right? I never picked up a golf club until I was 22 years old. And let's just say with no lessons or experience, it's embarrassing how unawkward or how awkward it feels. As an athlete, right? I was, I had a ball, I could figure it out. Not golf. But you know what? Uh, when you get to the driving range and you just whack a thousand balls, you know, 30 days in a row, you kind of figure it out. Then you go get lessons and you tweak and you, you get better. Now I can shoot, you know, sub 90. Um, but that's what I'm trying to teach. I'm trying to take you to the, to the driving range, put down a bucket of balls and just have you keep whacking it every day. So the answer to the question is what I want you to do in this scenario is I want you to pick a buy box in San Diego. I want you to be able to drive to it. I want you to go through open houses. I want you to look at, have contractors to give you bids. You know, is this a turnkey? Is this a dump? I want you to go to, you know, three open houses a weekend. I want you to go to local meetups and talk about to other landlords. I want, I want you to learn about anything specific to San Diego. I want you to learn the skill of learning average. Then in about 90 days, maybe 60, but I'm going to say 90 for most people, you're going to have an aha moment. You're going to be like, damn. I get it now. San Diego is a negative two, a, a positive one. I don't know what San Diego is, but it's probably not a great yield. And then the choice is yours. At that point, my job is done. You could buy in San. I have several students in San Diego. If, if they're comfortable with 3% return, why should I argue? Not my money. If you decide that's not for you, then you can go. Once you have that skill, you can go to any golf course. Again, back to the analogy around the country and play a decent round of golf. So I would tell you to to buckle up, get after it. Uh, I do not think you'll be buying a rental in nine or in three months. I think you'll have the skill down, and then at that point you get to decide what to do. This people people want to rush it. And again, I'm the do the work, but also be patient, consistency guy. I'm not promising an easy button. I'm not. It, this is not easy. Daily consistency, focus. Networking, grow your network, bad things happen. All these rules, the seven rules. But uh, I promise you this, if you do the work for 90 days, you'll learn average and then you, you'll you be in a much better position to decide because you could go anywhere and redo it. And the beauty is the second time you learn it, it'll be much faster. So um, I'm glad you picked that one up because so many people get that. They, they kind of get that wrong. Right. Okay, uh, let's see here. Another question from the email list. And this is for somebody who's asking about how to get rental number two. So Elizabeth says, hi, Michael. I'm a 33-year-old mom of two. I work full-time as a social worker and I want to become a real estate investor. Mm -hmm. I own a home with a lot of equity and one long-term rental with great tenants in place. I know to get financially free, I need to keep going. 
Should I buy a new rental now or wait until the market continues to soften next year? I'm also looking for a mentor who's in a long-term rental hold market. All right, Mike, what do you think about that? Time um, in the market. Yeah. You know, my answer hopefully is very consistent. I am not the time the market guy. I'm the do the work guy. I have no idea. I don't know about your market. I don't know where you're at. Uh, I do know from very consistent um, history, if you do the work, sometimes you stumble across a deal of the decade. Um, you, everybody knows what I think. I'm a freaking open book. I tell everybody every day. I think we're in for a housing crash down 50%. I think there will be some great deals out there, but I think it takes work. Um, I would never give some, like, let's just say, again, people have heard me, right? We're going to get to March. We're going to go through six months of nothing. We're going to get to March and see. Maybe the market tanks in March. No idea. Maybe it goes up. No idea. What's what's unemployment? What's rates? All these things that I have no... Is the war still going on? There's so many... I've never seen a six-month window with so many different divergent off-ramps. It's just wild to think about. But I do know the next six months are going to be wicked slow. Uh, but again, that's... get up, Do the work, right? First off, congratulations on your one long-term rental. Uh, congratulations on your goal. Being a single parent, mom or dad is not easy. Awesome, right? Respect. But find 20 minutes a day, maybe two 10-minute chunks, because I, I can only imagine how busy you are. M much respect. Um, but do the work. Look, understand, network. I mean, it doesn't, It the the my answer doesn't matter if you're a single mom of two or a single dad of two, single dad of one, uh, or a full-time employee uh, and single. It doesn't matter. My, my advice doesn't matter. Doesn't change. It's do the work, focus, daily discipline. So yeah. And timing the market works nearly for no one. Yeah. It's always a good day to buy a great deal. There's going to be deals that can be found in hot markets, found cooling or markets. created, right? Right. Found or created. There we go. Um, so yeah, so you don't, don't get too caught up in the whole, well, maybe I should just wait. Well, maybe I should just wait. Cause people have been doing that since the beginning of the last recession and they missed opportunities over a decade now. So a good day to buy a great deal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we've got two more questions. So this one is on an economic white paper. You have consistently told us that you plan to write an economic white paper <laughs> on what the fed has done to break Housing. Yeah. Can you explain in greater detail what an economic white paper is and when you will be writing one? Is there a threshold of destruction that you're waiting to happen before you pull the trigger? Well, what's going to eventually tip you over the edge and convince you to author it? Uh, so the, the short answer is I would need um, a chief economist from a well-known institution to kind of partner with me. I don't have the um, job titles, the experience. I'm not a paid economist. Um, so I could partner with someone, right. Uh, and, and make it a, a paper that we both author together. Um, again, as I think I mentioned earlier, my, the Mount Rushmore comment, I am really good at combining consumers with housing, but there's a much broader economic area, which I'm weak at cause I haven't studied it in 20 years. So the short answer is, um, I would have to partner with someone. I do talk with some economists, like actually have that title. Uh, so we've, we've toyed with the idea. I suspect what they're waiting for is more destruction, right? Because again, they're, they're putting their reputation on the line to, you know, work with somebody who's a, you know, a retired tech worker. Um, so that's, that's an actual economic white paper that would be published somewhere. Uh, what, what may happen is sometime next year, kind of coming out of this, I may just write a paper and self publish it much like I did my book. I could do that on my own, but I, I think calling that an economic white paper would be disingenuous. But I do think what we are going through today is is the closest thing that I've read to the 1980-81 era. And we've had 40 years of economic data that most people don't realize there's other options, right? We've had 40 years of rates falling. We've had 40 years of a traditional housing market and all that shit's breaking right now. So- I may end up writing something solo. I, I won't be disingenuous and call it an, a, an official white paper, but I am talking with others. And if there's enough destruction, um, they might take me up on it. So we'll, we'll see early next year, probably. Well, I just hate to see some, you know, big wig economic or economist out there subscribe to your channel, steal all your ideas and get credit for, you know, your forecasts. So that's, okay. that's why we want to hear that one. Yes. Yes. I got you. 
Okay, so we have a very consistent commenter that's been leaving the same comment over and over again with what seems like an extremely biased opinion. This could be the last question of the day. So I don't know if you're familiar with this person, but uh, a certain Miss Dorothy Zuber continues to say <laughs> that this is the best daily financial news, like clockwork on every video that you make. So we want to know, is this in fact actually uh, the best daily financial news? Uh, uh, first off, one of the one of the one of the best days for me on this channel. I think it was about a year and a half ago where I was talking to my mom, like a good son is. And she goes, Michael, I watch all your videos. I'm like, come on, all my videos. Right. I put out a lot of stuff. Right. Really? Yeah. And she's like, yeah, I watch them all. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it, it, I was, I was like, let's just say uh, as a son who loves his mother, who, who knows his mom made choices that I could have never made. Um, and I've told her that. It it uh, it still tickles me to think that she watches all of them. So um, shout out, mom! I love you. Thank you for everything you did. You're doing now. You did in the past, and you'll do in the future. Uh, is it the best? I, it's probably it's probably the most consistent, right? Over a thousand days now. Um, I certainly try to be better every day. Um, I I'm not I'm not going. It's it's not for me to say. It it's not for me to say. But if others want to say it. It, it uh, that's awesome. I appreciate it. Your mom says it to you. That's awesome. And uh, just so everybody knows and, and, and is clear, if you ever leave a negative comment on one of my mom's comments, I will block you immediately. Uh, that's not cool. That's, you know, off. You can pick on me, but you don't pick on Dorothy. So hands off. Be nice. Well, uh, I guess leave it down in the comment, folks. Do you think Mike's mom is right or wrong? Uh, like the video, Mike. That's all we got for this one. I think we'll see you next week. Uh, Mike, again, you, you offered to do this, I think about six or eight weeks ago. It's so much work for you to do. Uh, thank you. Where can people find you? Yeah. You know, some of the commenters had questions about out of state investing and things like that. So within your course, I created a whole segment about how to get started out of state investing how to pick a market out of network. So some of the questions might've been applicable there, or you can just look me up on Instagram or YouTube, just type in millennial Mike and I should pop up. Oh, thanks, buddy. Appreciate it.